Hi, let's take a look at Mechelen in Belgium on a trip organised in association with Visit Flanders and Visit Mechelen. Our little road trip to Flanders, that's the northern part of Belgium if you didn't know, features a look at Ghent, Mechelen and Leuven. The ranges on our trip make it easily accessible with an electric car. Or if you want to travel by rail, all three cities can be reached via Brussels. In this video, we're going to take a look at the fabulous city of Mechelen. And within the historic heart of this city, everything is within a 10 to 15 minute walk of the central Grot Market or Great Market. And you'll find the tourist information nearby. So without further ado, let's discover Mechelen. On the sign we have the tower, the town hall, the museum Hof van Buscheladen and the salmon. We'll get to that later. Now we love Mechelen. It's a bit of a hidden gem. There's plenty to see and do, but there's also loads of places to eat and drink. I think the Belgians have been keeping it a secret. It was heavily damaged in the First World War, as was a lot of Flanders, but it was restored to its former glory. Look for clues by checking out some of the date stones on the buildings. We're heading towards the old fish market and the river Dyla. That to our right is the old fish market. We'll be back a little later to take a look. This waterway will take us to Antwerp in the north and provided a vital trade route in the Middle Ages. It also fed a series of canals that run throughout the city. Most have now been lost but they are marked if you know what you're looking for. Some have also been revived as part of the European project Water in Historic City Centres. You will discover them as you explore Mechelen. But the best way of course to explore Mechelen and the River Dealer is on a boat trip. It would be fair to say we could have been blessed with better weather but that wasn't going to spoil our enjoyment. You pick up the electric boat from Hoverwerf opposite the old fish market and proceed towards Antwerp. The trip allows you to enjoy the mix of the historic and the newly developed as you pass by Mechelen's Yachting Club. As we reach the Van der Volk Hotel, which I think was the old public swimming pool, it's time to turn around. Heading back you'll notice the Cranbrook or Crane Bridge. You're going to need your watch your heads as we pass under it. But once you pop up, check out the three 16th and 17th century buildings on our right. They are one of the highlights of Harbour Worth, which I should have mentioned means oat yard, where all grain had to be unloaded for market. Next we pass the old Lamotte Brewery on our right. The brewery was acquired many times, but brewing finished here in the mid 90s. It's now a conference and heritage centre. And on our left is the old fish market again now home to many bars, restaurants and cafes. And now we're passing under the Hoogbrug, the oldest stone bridge in Flanders dating back to 1230. On either side of the river are buildings of tradesfolk for whom the diner was their lifeline. Our next bridge is the Fontaine Brook or Fountain Bridge and if you're following the Dealerpad footpath on our right you cross over the bridge to rejoin it as it makes its way through the botanical gardens. Our next bridge is an old wooden water mill, one of a series that used to help regulate the water flow of the Dyla. This is the last remaining one and a free to visit museum piece. Our journey on the water continues a little further, but this is where we'll turn around. Once under the water mill, we get the best view of the stunning Basilica of Our Lady of Hanswick. This is one of the many fine places of worship within Mechelen that are home to some amazing art which we'll take a look at a little later. Once again there's the mix of the old and the new. The Mechelen boat trip lasts about 40 minutes and gives you a unique view of the city. For example you get to check out the buildings known as the Sturgeon, the Scale and the Salmon. Guess we're heading back to the fish market. Did you spot the extra arch on the Hoogbrook on our right? Well it provided access to the fish market. A 
another benefit of the boat too is that the audio guide provides you with tons of facts on the history of Mechelen and the River Dyla. Now let's take a look at those merchants' houses. This is Dizarm, the Salmon. And these fabulous buildings can be found on the Salt Wolf or Zodverf. It's only a few steps from here to the Vismarkt or Fish Market. But we're not eating here. Instead we're going to De Vlieshal, the Meat Hall. This repurposed butcher's market is now a food hall providing fresh, fastish food and drink. It looks quiet now at around 2.15 but when we arrived at 1.30 it was bustling. We'd highly recommend it if you're visiting. There's a bewildering array of options from around the world. I opted for the traditional croquette, so. Fully fueled, we were ready to discover more of what Mechelen had to offer. And that meant enlisting the help of Visit Mechelen and heading out on a walking tour. The first tip our guide, Mary Louise, shared with us is that some of the finest Flemish Renaissance art is not found in galleries and museums, it's found in churches. Take, for example, the beautiful church of Our Lady across the River Dyla. We were amazed to find the miraculous draft of fishes by Peter Paul Rubens, painted in the 17th century. There are many other fine features inside the church, such as this amazing fresco. And then there's the ornate wooden pulpit, highlighting the skills of Mechelen's woodworkers. Our next discovery is at the Church of St John the Baptist and St John the Evangelist. And it probably won't surprise you, but it's another Rubens. This time we have the Adoration of the Magi hanging over the altar. Regardless of your faith, this is a truly stunning sight. I should have mentioned that this is part of Mechelen's Burgundian walking tour. The links to this and all the other sites and attractions we visit will be in the description below. And again, Mechelen's woodworkers are showing off with another fantastic pulpit. For more art, we have the Museum Hof van Boezeleden, which as you can see was under restoration when we visited. There is a permanent collection as well as visiting collection, so check out the link in the description for more info. Now we have Mechelen's Municipal Theatre, which was originally part of the vast palace of Margaret of York. Margaret of York was a sister of Edward IV and Richard III, kings of England, and the third wife of the Burgundian ruler, Charles the Bold. The palace of Margaret of Austria, her step-granddaughter, sits across the road, a fine piece of Renaissance architecture. From one period of history, I need to take you to an altogether darker one, the Kazern Dossin Memorial to the Holocaust. Mechelen was a thriving transit hub linking Brussels, Ghent and Antwerp. That made it the unfortunate choice to transport those selected to the concentration camps in the east. As a result, 25,274 Jews and 354 Romani people departed here. Only 1,395 of them survived. We did not have enough time to visit the museum, which was a shame but visiting Dachau and the Documentation Centre at Nuremberg has taught us about the rise of National Socialism, events long before the outbreak of World War II, long before the Nazis swept to power in 1933, sowed the seeds of hatred. It's a chilling place to visit in Mechelen, to see the railway wagons that transported those poor souls and the former barracks, to understand what happened here, but it must never be forgotten or hidden. We now need to look at a story of love and compassion, the grand beguinage of Mechelen. If you saw our video on again, you might already know about the Beguines, a group of single women who remained unmarried and dedicated their lives to God, but didn't take vows. They supported those women who had fallen on hard times through no fault of their own and provided a safety net. 
They would create institutions such as hospitals, and this story leads to an interest of mine. In treating the sick, they boiled the water, then they added flavourings to make it taste better. And you guessed it, one thing led to another, and they started brewing. This provided some additional revenue to allow them to support their projects in the community. And that leads me nicely onto a tour of Mechelen's last remaining brewery that can trace its heritage back to the beginnings, the Het Anker Brewery. I love this experience. Sure, I've been on other brewery tours, but this one was special. The Het Anker Brewery is home to the Golden Cow Loose Beers, the Manibluza Lager, and another little surprise too. We were met by Rudy, our guide, who explains the brewery's origins. And then he takes us inside and runs through the ingredients. Hops, malted barley, and then the optional orange peel, cumin, coriander, and star anise, as well as yeast and water all mixed in large copper tons. Rudy takes us through the entire brewing process, switching seamlessly between Dutch and English. Next we discover the timeline. In 1872, the family Van Breedem bought and modernised the brewery. In 1904 it became the Het Anker Brewery, we know today. In 1990, Charles Leclerc fifth generation Van Breeden took over the running of the brewery and in 2013 they diversified and released their first single malt whiskey. This became our first tasting session but we're not really whiskey drinkers so here's Janice's tasting notes. It burns! Thanks for that Janice. But what we really want to try is the beers and the good news is that's next. The tour continues and we discover that the Golden Caroluce is named after Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, who was brought up in Mechelen. He enjoyed the local beer so much, in later life he had it shipped to his seat of power in Spain. We start with a chalice of Golden Caroluce Triple, 9% alcohol but wonderfully smooth. Next it's the Golden Caroluce Classic, a mere 8.5% but the taste of toffee, cocoa and dried fruits sing through wonderfully. I just need to secure my lifetime supply. The tour concludes with Rudy handing out a guilt of token for your complimentary beer glasses. Now it's time to look at Mechelen's wonderful St Rumbold's Cathedral and climb that tower. The cathedral started life as a church just after 1200. Work continued over the centuries and it was completed in the 16th century, becoming a cathedral in 1559. Again, the pulpit is a display of the local woodworking craft. Pope John Paul II celebrated Mass at St Rumbold's Cathedral in 1985 to celebrate his 65th birthday. It has to be said, it's an impressive place of worship and as you would expect, has a wonderful collection of religious art as well as some fantastic stained glass windows. Time to be quiet and enjoy the setting. As beautiful as the cathedral is, there's no putting off what comes next. The 538th step climb to the skywalk at the top of St Rumbold's Tower. And check out those organ pipes. We'll next see those 160 steps later in the crane chamber. It's 73 steps to the next level and in total there are six floors where you can stop and grab your breath. It's also one way up and another down, so you're not trying to pass people as you make your way up and down the tower. After 413 steps, we arrive at the Kuilin Chamber with two sets of 49 bells. In 1999, the tower was listed on the UNESCO World Heritage Site as one of the significant belfries in Belgium and France. The next level is the clock chamber of 423 steps. And prior to the 1930s, the clock would have been wound manually every 24 hours. We now get to see the massive church bells, and you feel the end of the climb is now in sight. We 
When you reach the top and climb to the skywalk, you are greeted with views for miles over the low countries. On a clear day you can see both Antwerp and Brussels, which are both roughly 14 miles away to the north and south. After taking in the views, it's time to head back down and grab that well-earned beer. You've deserved it. And the obvious place to come is the Grotma and pick a bar that suits you. I choose the Golden Carolus Classic and Janice and Manibusa from the Hetanka Brewery. So why are people from Mechelen called Manibusas? Which translates to moon extinguishers. Well, legend has it that on the night of the 27th of January 1687, a man steps out of a bar and thinks St. Rumbold's Tower is ablaze. He raises the alarm and the townsfolk come to the rescue, creating a human chain feeding buckets of water to the tower. Then the low clouds in front of the red moon start to shift, and it becomes clear they're trying to extinguish the moon. Sounds like a grand story to me. Anyway, to present day Mechelen. I really feel like it's a hidden gem. It's a warm friendly city with plenty of places to eat and drink. Just a short hop from Antwerp or Brussels, it's the perfect size to explore on foot. Remember, everything we have seen has been a 10 to 15 minute walk from this spot. We've discovered plenty more as we've strolled around, but I couldn't fit it all in. The Sheppen House is where you'll find the tourist information, and they are really helpful. We have had such a good time in this city. I'm now leading you back to the Vismark, and this is where we had two of the best meals of our Flemish trip. Lemo, under the old Lamotte Brewery, and the exquisite Emile, first class food and service. So the million dollar question, is Mechelen for you? Leave us a comment, we'd love to know. And now it's time to wrap up. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe, stay well, and happy travels.